Welcome back to another Two Sport Bros, I guess, YouTube podcasty thing. I don't know. We'll figure out a proper name for it eventually. Will we ever? I don't know. Um, but anyway, we've got some juicy, juicy news that has been dropped today. And it, in, it involves an American League baseball team known as the Detroit Tigers. They have announced they've agreed to a deal with right-hander pitcher Ivan Nova, who apparently has a 4.32 season ERA average as well as a 4.32 postseason average. So, magical. This is the signing that's going to push them over the top and over the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> I hope so now. <laughs> in all seriousness, in all seriousness, we actually are on the leading edge of news for once instead of a few days behind, which is just based on our schedules usually how this happens. And what a day to be a Houston sports fan. Twenty, Not even in 24 hours, the, the Texans just have the biggest meltdown in NFL postseason history. Yeah, I mean, my I was delivering pizza at the time. My dad texted me. He's like, 21 nothing, first quarter, Texans. I was like, wow. And then what did it end up as? 50, 51, yeah, they, they 30? They gave up 41 something? unanswered points, and then they would end up losing 51-31. Christ. Uh, and then not... Reeling off that, MLB decides, here's now's the time. We're done with our investigation. Here's what happened with the Houston Astros and that trash can in the dugout. And it's honestly a lot worse than I thought the uh, allegation was going to be and who was involved in such. I mean, we weren't but, sure how high up the totem pole this went. Um, yeah. But to, to get it for... Uh, not only the general manager and the regular manager as well. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know if it even goes up any higher than that, or if they are just sort of like, we're just going to do it from this standpoint. Um, yeah. So I guess we should back up for a second and start from where the, where the commissioner, uh, lays out his findings, which is that after, months of investigation work and multiple interviews come to the, the determination that uh, in the 2017 season, uh, several players came forward and said, hey, let's use this brand spanking new video room that we use for replays and use it to uh, steal the signs off the catcher. And not only was the did the players do that, but they had a facilitator, a ringleader, in Alex Cora, the bench coach. And at at the time, the manager, uh, A.J. Hinch, he did not condone it. Actually, reports said twice he destroyed the video cameras and forced their replacement in order to, to say that he was not for it. But he did not report this to anyone. He did not uh, bring this up to the league. And this happened... Mostly unchanged through the 2017 season. It was briefly stopped when one player, Danny Farquhar, uh, caught wind of it. And they had to kind of hide away. But it was brought back for the World Series. And uh, you can easily say single-handedly got them the World Series uh, championship in 2017. And... That's not a denial now that you can say that the Yankees and the Dodgers both got cheated out of potential World Series wins. I think with that's it's one of many things that you can say out of this. But I, mean, that's, I don't, I don't think the Yankees, Yankees fans, were going to win the a, World Series that year, even if they got by the Astros. Um, I think the Dodgers were just too good that year. Um, yeah, but either either way, that every it's the same thing that the up 3-2, all they had to do was win one yep. game in Houston, and they never did that. Yeah. Now, uh, the punishments for this, uh, 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 Jeff Lunhow, the general manager, and A.J. Hinch, the manager, while, both, while one deny, Lunhow denies that he had any part in this, and A.J. Hinch uh, did not support it, they were the ones in power to stop this, and for that they both got a one-year suspension and then they were both fired yeah 
Well, I'll get we'll yeah. get to that. But uh, in addition, um, the uh, league is fined as fine major league. Yeah, let me restart that. In addition, Major League Baseball has fined the Astros five million dollars, which it's low, but as it turns out, in the baseball constitution, which who knew we had one. They are only allowed to fine upwards of five million dollars for anything like this, which sounds like something that needs to be updated after this. The bigger thing in the long term is that for the 2020 and 2021 uh, amateur drafts, that the Astros will lose their first round and second round picks, which not only that's a lot of developmental money, but is also a a brain dra- uh, talent drain on the farm system. Uh, also announced at this time, the uh, the assistant general manager uh, who had made those uh, sexist remarks uh, during the uh, playoffs uh, to reporters has been is- on the ineligible list and cannot be reinstated at least until after the 2020 season. So he's at banned from baseball, effectively. And then to top this all off, the Jim Crane, the Astros manager, holds a press conference immediately after this and says that he's going above and beyond what Major League Baseball said and let go uh, Lunhow and Hinch. So now the Astros, they have no manager. They have no general manager. They're, My concern they about have that, farm though, system. Um, with the whole firing, uh, is now that he's out of a job, um, it's not like, oh, he's now suspended for the year, come back in a little bit. It's like, if, say, I don't know, the Marlins decide to hire Hinch come next year, does he have to sit out now a year for that? Because I, I don't think so, because they were suspended for the, the season under their contract with the Astros, which now is null and void, so they serve their time time they're not going to be hired for uh, this season and uh, 2021 they'll be able to get jobs now will they get jobs AJ Hinch almost certainly will he's one of the highest respected managers in the game right now very liked and and he'll have no shortage of jobs after Lundhau on the other hand while he is the one that orchestrated this entire rebuild that turned the Astros from a more bound franchise into perennial 100-game winners, he is hated by just about everyone in baseball. Other GMs hate him. Scouts hate him. But he is not liked. And he'll, I imagine he'll find a job elsewhere, but it'll take a lot longer. Why is he hated so to, much? I haven't heard anything about that. He, he fired a lot of scouts... Uh, uh, across the board in the, the name of uh, statistics and analysis that Lunhow is on the curve of Major League Baseball stuff that's been saying, as we've been saying along, that the Astros are the ones spearheading why Major League Baseball wants to cut all those minor league franchises. He's the one driving all the statistics-related stuff that you see going on with baseball. It all comes to him and that's put a lot of people out of out of work that until he came around just worked their way up made their waited their turn and then finally got their job but now thanks to him a lot of the stuff that he started that that's not the case anymore but that's a different argument for another day yeah i, I want to talk now, a little I, bit about the punishment aspect of it um mm-hmm. yeah they're losing their first and second round picks and while that's, uh, I, I, I'm going to say a fair thing. I'm not saying, like, that's what it should be. I'm saying, like, that should happen. Um, but I'm not, like, impressed with that um, just because how many players drafted in the first round are really, like, always the best players? I mean, I, I, I understand you want to get rid of those higher players, especially with how scouting has been going on this last decade. Um, but I, I just don't think it's enough just by getting that. I mean, I think they really should have constrained them to like 
put together a team under $150 million and not reset that luxury tax. Um, I mean, there there is a, a bigger thing of it. Uh, the, the first round, uh, just taking a glance, uh, this is, isn't for everyone, but on average, a half to two-thirds of everyone who's drafted in the first round make it to the major the major leagues. The second round, it's le- a little less than that, but the, these are the talents where you say that this is where I'm going to find uh, players. Uh, 2010, which is what I'm referencing for, you have Bryce Harper, you have Drew Pomerantz, Matt Harvey, uh, Yasmani Grandal, Christian Yelich, even uh, guys who didn't really make it uh, too much. Cam Berdosian, uh, uh, Delino De Shields, uh, a Christian Cologne, who I think briefly surfaced for like a couple games. But there are a lot more people that made it to the major leagues in the first round than any other round. No, so, I'm, I'm not doubting all, that. I'm just saying, in general, uh, I just don't think it was anything too spectacular um no and i i would agree i wish there was some more major league punishment like uh maybe restrict as we had in in a previous episode restrictions on who they could sign but uh, that might be taught their hands might be tied at that because of the uh, players Mm -hmm. union and that they would have to clear out with that which speaking of that if you may have noticed that two names have been left out at the moment those are Carlos Beltran and Alex Cora and what their punishments are. And the for the first one, there is no punishment for Carlos Beltran. Um, that the uh, while he was one of the players that did um, uh, start and lead this off, that uh, Rob Manfred said he's not going to go down the rabbit hole of punishing players, so he he won't get a suspension. But you you'll be darn sure that the league is going to be closely watched the Mets this year. Oh, yeah. That he's going to be under an intense microscope, which is more than can be said with what's going to happen with uh, Alex Cora because uh, I didn't get to reference this in my episode last week because it broke Yeah, I know. I was like, just texted uploaded. you right after. It was like, oh. Yeah. But Ken Rosenthal, who broke the original story for the Astro sign stealing, said that the Red Sox in 2018 also uh, uh, stole signs. They, they did it a different way that they they used a, just used the replay room and then did the time-honored tradition of get to second base and then relay the signs that way. And I was wondering when it first came out, is that because of Alex Cora and because he was on the Astros? And now that we know that Cora was the orchestrator, the grand poobah of the astro system that he was the one that that pushed its development further than what the players wanted it makes perfect sense now that the red sox did this and not only that that uh what's going to happen because the in one of the last paragraphs that that uh uh, manfred has in his article let me see if i can pull it up here it is uh a quote from uh the uh, statement, Cora was involved in developing both the banging scheme with the trash cans and u- utilizing the replay review room to decode and transmit signs. Cora participated in both schemes and through his active participation implicitly condoned the player's conduct. I will withhold determining the appropriate level of discipline for Cora until after the the DOI completes its investigation in the allegations that the Red Sox engaged in impermissible electronic sign stealing in 2018 while Cora was the manager. That is damning. And when you think about what uh, what uh, Jim Crane did to Hinch and Lunho, uh, firing them, it makes you wonder what's going to happen with Cora. What are we going to see a suspension? Are we going to see it a multi-year suspension? Are we going to see a ban from the game? If he's not banned from the game, will we see the Red Sox ownership just outright fire him like the Astros did? This is it's largely a statement on the Reds on not the Red Sox. It's largely a statement on the Astros, but the Red Sox have been 
fatally wounded in this crossfire because like Hinch, uh, Cora was one of those young, up-and-coming, charismatic managers that everyone liked. And now, who knows if he's even going to manage another game of baseball. Um, I think it does matter uh, for the Red Sox, and it sort of reflects them. I mean, the Astros sort of set a precedent by firing the GM and manager. Uh, I think if this cracks down... MLB finds the Red Sox guilty, Alex Cora guilty, and now he's caught in this technically twice, um, because we had talked about the last time we did this, that Alex Cora is no longer with the Astros, is he allowed to be touched by this, um, especially that he's still, a co- he was a coach there, he's coach now, but it's a different and team. And the answer is very much yes. <laughs> but if, if he was double dipping, uh, I mean... Man, like, I, I think the Red Sox have to fire him after uh, what the Astros did. I mean, Hinch just did this theoretically one season, um, even though it probably went more than that. Yeah, according to what the investigation said is that after the they did it briefly in the 2018 season but quickly stopped it, I think probably because... As we know from the athletic article, that at the very least, uh, Mike Fires was telling other teams, "Hey, they do this. Keep an eye out on it." So the saying, "We can't, we can't uh, risk this at at this point. We got to stop it." Mm. But there, there was one other uh, tidbit that came out. It wasn't out of the statement, but it was out of the MLB Tonight coverage that I was watching, and that. That is that Commissioner Manfred is considering uh, turning off the replay rooms as soon as the game starts. Because at the heart of both allegations, the Astros and the Red Sox, are those re- replay rooms that we see every every game. Whenever they're going to challenge someone, they, they say, hold, we, we're going to check the replay. Jim, is the replay room, is, does it show that he's safe? Say, he's safe? Okay, we're going to challenge. And it takes like a minute. But that's where they're going. The players are going in to see where the the signs are. That's how they're relaying. That's how the Astros got the signs to bang on the drum or not. And honestly, shut them off. This is a problem that was created when they added technology to the game. Take that technology out, and this shuts this down instantly. I think what they should do is embrace technology. Uh, they should. They really? should. They how should you swap. Uh, the cameras uh, in the replay room for Twitter. I've said this before. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I don't have Twitter. I think it's funny, but I think it's a big waste of time. Um, but So you're going to have Donald Trump calling all no, the, uh, no, no. the replays? <laughs> what we'll do is uh, if there's a controversial call... Uh, we will have someone designated in New York or Secaucus or wherever we get these highlights from. Um, you probably know better than I do. Um, and you put them on like MLB's Twitter page and then you have everybody vote for a minute after they see all the different angles. And that way you have Twitter answer it. That way you can't be like, oh, well, there was this and that, like... Twitter's going to get so it right. Twi- you see it happen all the time over Twitter. And most of the time, everyone basically agrees on the same thing. So if you just pull Twitter, everything will be fine. It'll save a massive headache later on. Um, so basically, you're using the audience lifeline from who wants to be a yes. millionaire. Yes, exactly. I still I still say the 10 seconds to challenge, one minute to review, and whatever they f- they figure out in that one minute, that's all it is. Yeah, if, but you're letting if Twitter decide it. that instead. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, this is this is a heck of a... Uh, yeah. And the, I can't, can't really say precedented because we've never had anything. This is the second largest... Tied for the second largest ban for a, a manager, only exceeded by... Pete Rose's lifetime ban from baseball. It, one of the largest reaching punishments throughout the game. And certainly, if any teams were considering trying to do something like this now, knowing what the 
the uh, punishments are going to be from the league, knowing what the pre- the precedent uh, Jim Crane set on how the owners should act when they know about this. No team should be considering what this is. And I wonder now what's what's going to happen with the integrity of the game because we know this is as I've been saying a lot recently this is this is only the first of three punches that are being thrown at the game of baseball the the, the second of which being the labor unrest between the players union and the ownership and the much more public uh disputes between the uh major league baseball and the owners of the minor league baseball team so I wonder if this is just the the prelude to a dark cloud to begin this decade for Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean, this is not going to be anything easy to get over. Uh, it's just, like you said, it's unprecedented. Uh, but uh, back to Twitter, not for my reasoning, but uh, I was oh boy. <laughs> sifting through some certain things and some idiot had tweeted something like, Oh, well, these guys just got a one-year ban, and the players, nothing happens to them. But when the Black Sox did that, you had the scandal for that, they all got banned for life. And I'm like, that's totally different. But then the more I think about it, is it really that different? I mean, one set of guys were tanking to lose games for money. Uh, These guys were basically spinning games to win them in a not proper way and they're basically getting rewarded with more money endorsements and a world series trophy um well there is one huge yeah i I know this but that that in the black Sox case that those were players who were disgruntled by their ownership at being stingy uh, went and threw the game on their own accord and the punishment back then was because this was the first time baseball was having a commissioner and they they weren't going to err on the side of a light punishment like deflate in the NFL. In the Astros case, as we demonstrated with uh, with Alex Cora, AJ Hinch, and Jeff Lunhow, not only were this the players doing it, but coaches and and uh, management either were indifferent and didn't do anything to stop it, or were outright participating in it as well. And that gets into scary points in what the integrity of the sport is. That's kind of getting into FIFA levels of scandals. Yeah. If that keeps going on. Yeah. I mean, like I said, uh, at first it seems crazy to ban them for life over that. But uh, the more I think about it, 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 not that it's exactly the same thing, but more or less you're manipulating the game. I mean... Considering uh, how much now sports betting is, um, how much that impacted that entire thing, uh, people losing money on that, people gaining money on that, uh, mm. it's a totally different ball game. Um, yeah, no pun yeah, intended. Yeah, no, it's just it's entirely new, and this is uncharted waters uh we we thought we'd seen it all uh but this year has just brought us a whole bunch of different crazy stuff yeah what a way to start the decade and there are two last points i want to get on the subject make sure to get them before one is that the astros have no clear in-house replacements that the for the general manager uh the uh, most of their great talent has been hired away to other teams and or is their assistant general manager who is now banned from baseball for at least a year. And while they have Joe Espada, who is a well-regarded bench mm-hmm. coach who could take the mantle of, manag- of the ma- managerial, I don't think that Jim Crane or MLB wants anyone who's in-house, even if it was slightly after the time where this happened, to be taking the reins of what looks like a and was laid out in the report as a clearly dysfunctional organization that had lost control of its players. So expect maybe a Buck Showalter to uh, come in and and manage, maybe a Dusty Baker. I don't know. Someone who has like a few years. Like I I know some of those guys are looking for jobs, but some of those guys aren't like 
young guys anymore. I mean, they might not want to deal with this giant headache and all this new school well, technology. Yeah. I mean, but maybe then again, that's exactly what they need is to have Buck Showalter yeah, and, come in and be like, all right, we're doing things old school. This is what we're doing. And it's not like the Astros or potent, or most likely the Red Sox as well, with when we find out what happens to Cora, are have time to be picky and choosy. It's too it's not even it's barely a month before pitchers and catchers report. Uh Hinch was actually supposed to have a uh meeting at the end of the week to determine what the with his coaches to say what's going on in spring training he can't be he's not a part of that anymore and we had eight managerial hires already this year this these this could bring this to a record a very recent record of nine or ten managerial new hires in a single off season yeah, that's a third of the league amazing yeah a third who would have thought a third of of the managerial jobs in the league at the end of near the end of 2019 would be turned over for the next decade. And we could even see like maybe a Bruce Bochy who said that he was going to take a year off before looking. Maybe he sees the Red Sox or the Astros and said that would be a good opportunity to jump back on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both teams still have plenty of talent. So Bruce has three World Series and five-year run. I mean, if I'm either of those teams in... He's thinking of coming out, and you need to find someone new. And not only new, someone who's very respected in very the game respected, and can bring order to more chaos. More old school, where you're not going to use as much of the technology, at least for the first year, to like sort of like get everything by um, and keep all the pressure low and tensions. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I would I would take him or Show Walter as we discussed. Um, but, and then my my last point, which I want to say, you want to know who the biggest winners out of all of this are, which is kind of morbid to say, but is still true. Who? The Yank the Yankees signed Garrett Cole from the Ast- Astros, their number one pitcher. Mm-hmm. The Astros lost the one of the most talented managers in baseball and one of the most savvy, if if not also disliked, general managers in the game. And the at the Red Sox, their division rivals, are very much looking like they're going to lose their manager, if not other parts of their front office. So the Yankees suddenly see their biggest uh, rival for next season and their their classic divisional rival brought down to their knees, basically, and having to do some soul searching while the Yankees are riding high with a team that who. Could, that how do we know they're going to get any better from a 108 win team and they're now very much the clear favorites heading into the beginning of the season. Yeah, who knew the Evil Empire were the good guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what what is what is this uh some weird mega mind uh script that we have here playing out before us? <laughs> mega mind, that's a great movie. Um, yeah. I was thinking like some Star Wars thing but I don't didn't remember any movie or any parody that was similar to that was where the good good guys were evil. Um, what was I gonna say? The last thing is people like I know I've said I I think there should have been more done, but some people are still crying about uh, vacating the title, which I don't think is gonna happen. Should it happen? No. Nope. No. No professional sport. And not football, not basketball, uh, not baseball, not hockey, to my knowledge, has ever vacated the title. Only the NCAA has, and that's a kind of different beast considering how many hundreds of of programs and stuff they have. That that's that's easy to do, and that's not as consequential. But if say just throwing these out here, but imagine vacating Super Bowl three for any reason. Imagine vacating the 1960 World Series for any reason. Any reason? How magnanimous, how big that would be, and also how much attention and how much negative attention would be brought to whatever sport would be the first one 
to have this happen. And with all the stuff that we laid out with that's coming in the future for baseball potentially, this is not vacating a title and setting that precedent is not the way baseball wanted to do this. So I think that Manfred on the eve of his wrapping up his first term as commissioner of baseball handled this great certainly handled this better than the nfl has had in their recent Mm -hmm. scandals and he he's come out as a big winner of this uh trying to establish accountability and credibility same thing with jim crane uh saying that i'm not standing for anything that that has gone under me and he's also able to keep his franchise which we were speculating might not happen and as i said just now the yankees who seen uh, one or two of their biggest obstacles to finally getting that World Series that might have been cheated out of them two times taken out, basically. So Yeah, I mean, it was a... What a, way, what a way to start the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, I mean, Bellinger was just like, oh, we're, we've done it the right way. Um, yeah. The Dodgers and Yankees, the biggest... the. Uh, the two teams that have the biggest gripes out of all this. Yeah. Um, but I still want to know, though, uh, the, the biggest, most important thing uh, is how did the Nationals win four games in Houston? You want to know the answer? How? Baby shark. Do, do, no, do, do, no, baby no. Shark. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to get copyrighted now. Yeah. Don't worry, I peaked the audio, so you got to edit part of that my side out anyway <laughs> uh, but on that on that note well welcome to the roaring 20s all right um and hopefully we'll get uh 20 world series in a matter of 10 years from from the yankees yeah that might seem impossible I mean, we're but we're, we're gonna make it happen we'll buy a championship for each championship we win hey we're owed two now yeah. so all right Craig, it's been good. Uh, We'll talk, I guess, maybe next week or some other time. I don't know. We'll figure it out. See what the schedules are like. We'll do it live. (laughs) All right. Catch you later. Right. We'll see you then. Bye.